Hey everyone, welcome back to Potential Web Code. Today, we're diving into an awesome project creating a sidebar using Bootstrap 5. Let's see the demo first. Our sidebar features several menu options. Each menu item comes with a cool icon and a clear description, making navigation a breeze. The project's menu has a drop down. When you click it, three submenus slide out, each with a slightly darker background. The submenu can be show and hide perfectly. Over on the right, we have our main content area. This sidebar is fully responsive. On smaller screens, like mobile, the sidebar adapts beautifully. Only the icons are displayed, while the descriptions are neatly hidden to save space. And yes, the drop-down menu still works flawlessly. Isn't that awesome? We're going to build this step-by-step, step, and by the end, you'll have a responsive, functional sidebar that looks amazing. Before that let's hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for more exciting web development tutorials. Now, let's start by setting up our sidebar project. Let's open your code editor. I'm using Visual Studio Code here. Let's begin by preparing our HTML and CSS files. We start with our HTML file. Let's set the basic structure of our HTML. We've changed the title into Responsive Sidebar Bootstrap 5 to reflect our project. Next, we need to connect Bootstrap to our project. So, open your browser and search for Bootstrap 5. Look for the official Bootstrap website. We will copy this to CDN link to our project. Let's copy the CSS link first. Then we paste this link into the head section of your HTML file. Then, let's copy the JS link for Bootstrap. This is necessary for the interactive components. Paste the JS link just before the closing body tag in your HTML file. This ensures that Bootstrap's JavaScript functionality will be included. We'll also need Bootstrap icons for our sidebar menu. Copy the Bootstrap Icons link from the Bootstrap Icons website. Finally, let's link our custom CSS file to the HTML. We've successfully set up our basic HTML structure and Bootstrap link. Next, we will continue to build our sidebar. To make things easier, I've added a preview pane on the right side of my editor. So you'll see the changes in real time as we code. We'll start by dividing our layout into two main sections, the sidebar and the main content area. Let's focus on the sidebar first. Let's begin by adding a div with the class sidebar. This will be our container for the sidebar. Inside this div, we'll add a nav element with the class nav and flex column to stack our navigation links vertically. Next, we add our first navigation link. We'll use the class nav link to style each link according to Bootstrap's design. Then, we add icon using span inside the nav link. Inside this icon span, we add Bootstrap icons to display a grid icon. We also add text as description to represent the icon. Now, we are done at our first link, so, let's add a few more links to our sidebar. We will add links for posts, notifications, projects and settings. For post menu, we set class to nav link as wrapper. Next, We add span with class icon. Inside it, we add icon of clipboard. Then, we add description that represent the icon.
Next, we add menu for notifications. So, we use the nav link class for the wrapper. Then, we add the icons of bell using bootstrap icon. We set the text to notifications. Now, let's add a menu that includes a dropdown. This will make our sidebar even more interactive and functional. To add a dropdown menu to our sidebar, we'll start by adding a new navigation link with the class nav link just like our previous menu items. Next, we add an icon representing the project section. Then, we add description in a caret icon indicating a drop-down. To make this menu item a dropdown, we add several attributes to the anchor tag. We add data beast toggle toe collapse to enable the link to toggle a dropdown menu. We target the LME at with the ID submenu to collapse or expand. Next, we set the initial state of the dropdown to not expand it. Then, we add aria control to indicate that this link controls the submenu element. Before we add the submenu items, let's enhance our project's menu by adding an arrow icon. This will help users easily understand that this menu has submenus. Now, let's add those submenu items. We'll go through each submenu item in detail to ensure everything is clear. First, let's add a container for our submenu items. This container will hold all the submenu links for the projects menu. Now, let's add our first submenu item, project 1. We create a link for the submenu item. Next, we add an icon for project when using bootstrap icons. Then, we add description for project 1. We can see inside the project menu, there is submenu of projects 1. Next, we'll add our second submenu item, project 2. We set up a link for the submenu item. Next, we include an icon for project 2 using bootstrap icons. And we provide a label for project 2. Lastly, let's add our third submenu item, Project 3. We configure a link for the submenu item.
Then, what an icon for Project 3 using bootstrap icons. And we supply a description for Project 3. Now, we can see on the preview, there are three submenu inside our project menu. Now, let's add one more menu item settings. This will complete our sidebar with another useful feature. We use the same structure as our previous menu items. We create a new link for the settings menu. And we add a gear icon to represent the settings menu using bootstrap icons. Then, we add a description for the settings menu. And there we have it. We've now finished adding all the menus to our sidebar. Next, let's start by adding the main content area next to our sidebar. This will ensure that our layout looks balanced and professional. We'll begin by adding a main element with the class main content right after our sidebar div. This will be the container for our main content. Then, we add a heading to our main content using h to tags. And we add a paragraph to describe the main content area using p tag. Now, we are completed the HTML structure for our responsive sidebar. It's time to styling our sidebar. Let's open the CSS file. We'll begin by setting up the basic styles for the sidebar. First, we'll style the sidebar container to position it fixed on the left side of the screen. We position the sidebar at the top left corner by set the top to 0 and left to 0. We set the height to 100%. We set the sidebar width to 200 pixel. Add padding at the top for some breathing room. We give the sidebar a blue background color. Then, add smoothly transitions the width when it changes. Next, let's style the navigation links inside the sidebar to make them visually appealing. We use Flexbox to arrange the link's content. We set vertically centers the items. Then, we set the gap to 20 pixel to add space between the icon and the description. Next, we set the padding around the links for a better look. And we also set the text color to white. We can see the icons are eye-catching and the text is clean and white making it very readable against the blue background. Next, we'll style the description text inside the navigation links. We set the font size for the description text to 14 pixel. To enhance interactivity, let's add a hover effect to the navigation links. By change the background color to yellow when the link is hovered over. Now, let's style the submenu to differentiate it from the main menu. We give the submenu a darker blue background color. And we add some padding to the left for indentation. 
we can see on our preview, the submenu background color is different with the menu itself. Next, we'll style the main content class to ensure it takes up the remaining width of the screen and looks visually appealing. To ensure the main content takes up the full height of the viewport, we set the height to 100%. Then, we set the margin left to 200 pixel, ensuring it doesn't overlap with the sidebar. And we add padding around the content to give it some space and make it more readable. We've completed setting up our sidebar and main content for larger viewports. Now, let's make our layout even more amazing by adding responsive styling for smaller screens. We'll start by adding a media query that targets screens with a maximum width of 480 pixels. This will help us adjust the layout for smaller devices like smartphones. We reduce the width of the sidebar to 60 pixels on smaller screens, making it more compact. Let's resize our preview to small size. We can see the sidebar width become smaller. Then, we hide the description text inside the sidebar to save space and keep the sidebar clean. Next, we center the icons inside the sidebar link since the description text is hidden. For main content, we adjust the margin left to 60 pixel and to align with the narrower sidebar and provide adequate spacing. 